Welcome to the Zen Water Cooler Podcast. My name is Zen Water Cooler. The channel is Zen Water Cooler. Are you sick of me saying Zen Water Cooler? I hope so, because in this episode, we're going to not be talking about Zen Water Cooler. We're going to be talking about books. This is Writing 101, and I'm going to be spending some time doing a deep dive on why you should be interested in using print-on-demand skills to sell books. Now, as soon as I say selling books, your blood might run cold. You might be getting the sweats, the chills, the shakes. You start crying uncontrollably because it is an overwhelming subject for many people. When we think about print on demand, often we're thinking about sticking a funny t-shirt design up online and making some sales. I'm not going to be talking about that in this podcast. I'm going to be talking about three different types of books. There's low content books, medium content books, and high content books. And if your eyes are glazing over already, thinking this is going to be an overwhelming podcast, have no fear. I will guide you through this process. Now, this may be a long podcast. It's an audio-only podcast. So if you're driving around town or if you're sitting blindfolded in the dark, then this is the podcast for you. There's no pictures, and you can just use your imagination or maybe even take some notes down. And hopefully, the mystery of print-on-demand books will be revealed to you in this podcast. Now, let me ask you a question. Why should you be interested in books? You may be thinking, who cares about books? Books is a dead medium. I'm not an author. Nobody buys books anymore. Well, I'm going to talk about those three criticisms, but I'm also going to be talking about why you should be interested in books. One of the things about books that I really like, and I want to be very clear here as we jump in, I make sales as an author online. So I regularly get Amazon KDP. uh, I say checks in the mail. I'm so old, it's like checks in the mail. It's really, you know, they send you an email and they put money in my bank account. Books are awesome because they sit online as digital assets forever. And because books are so complex, they're very hard to replicate. So you picture a t-shirt graphic, for example, right? You have a cat wearing some headphones and there's maybe a rainbow background in the background. You go, okay, well, that's a great design. I'm going to create this design. You sell some copies. Then all of a sudden, there's 14 other cats wearing 14 other headsets, and there's 14 other rainbows in the background. You think, oh, man. And now you're constantly chasing new niches to go into. So I don't want to say books are superior to t-shirt designs. Hey, I mean, I make a lot of t-shirt sales too. But I will say books, if you're not into books, if you haven't thought about it, I'd really like to encourage you to give it some thought because what I get is I get emails from people that say, Zen, I'm retired or I'm on a fixed income and I'm looking for ways to increase my passive income every month in a side hustle capacity. And so I think books can offer a really good solution. So books are digital assets that sit forever online. That's a big deal. I regularly make sales on books that I've uploaded years ago. And it's amazing to me sometimes that people find them, but they do. Sometimes they're high content books, sometimes they're low content books. I do think the barrier to entry is much higher than a t-shirt. Creating a 100-page book, even a 32-page book, is much more effort than creating one t-shirt design. Now, of course, there's exceptions. Somebody could be a you know, a huge graffiti artist and they spray paint the side of a garage and it takes them three days to do the greatest mural of all time. They take a photograph, they then manipulate the photograph, they stick it on a t-shirt. I get it. My point being, all the other things being equal, generally speaking, I can create a t-shirt design in about five seconds, it feels like. It's probably more like five minutes. Whereas doing a book can take anywhere from... Man, it could be a couple days, maybe even a couple years to write a medium or a high content book. Now, a low content book I can bang out in about a half an hour. And I'll walk through that process in a little bit more detail here as we get into the podcast. But the barrier to entry is much higher than a t-shirt design for the most part. The other thing I wanted to point out is that if a book hits and it actually makes sales, you can really make some nice money. So I have niche research software that I use. It's called BookBolt, and I'll put a link to that in the podcast description. It is a paid service, and I would receive a small commission if you were to purchase it. So I did want to point out it is an affiliate link, but I do use BookBolt quite a bit. And I will say, in my niche research using BookBolt, I regularly see books that sell 100 copies a month, even 700 copies a month. I would say for me, I regularly sell 
at least a few copies a month of each type of book. And when a book hits for me, it could be 30, 40, 100 sales in a month. So it is pretty nice. Now that's not necessarily sustained forever and ever, but the more books you upload and the more high quality books you upload, the better the chance that you're gonna make consistent sales. I, I also really like books for another reason and it's got nothing to do with making sales. I'm a creative person and I consider myself an artist. So to be able to create a book that includes text or pictures inside the book and also a cover, and that cover is graphically designed as well, that really scratches a creative itch that I have because I don't want to just make t-shirt designs and I don't want to just make fine art print designs. So creating books is a completely different medium and it can really help you from a creative standpoint feel like you're doing something rather than just repeatedly uploading the same stuff on the same platforms again and again. Now this last reason I really like books, I fully admit, is an ego-driven reason. And so I, you know, I don't make any apologies for that. Generally speaking, if you're uploading t-shirt designs, you can market yourself as a graphic designer and people really like t-shirts. But there's something about a book, there's something about being an author that's a little bit of a status symbol. You can be proud of it. I'm not saying you can't be proud of being a graphic artist or a t-shirt designer, but there's just something about a book I've found over the years that if you say you're a published author and you have a book on your bookshelf, it does impress people. So look, I'm not suggesting that you wanna do this to try to get laid. I'm not suggesting you do this to try to get girls, but I'm just saying if you're looking at a t-shirt design and you're looking at books, there's nothing wrong with being proud of being an author. I think that's a really cool thing. There's lots of people I've talked to that would love to write a book, but they just don't know where to start and they don't consider themselves an author. So we're gonna get into that section here now, but reasons why you probably are, have not been interested in books so far or you're not interested in books maybe going forward. The first reason is that people will often say to me that books are a dead medium. And I think, and this is me, you know, pontificating into the microphone. I think the reason people think that is because they're using an old antiquated version of what they think books are. They're thinking it's like a bookstore, an old crusty bookstore where you walk in and you grab a murder mystery novel or a science fiction novel. I'm not talking about those types of books. Although to be totally fair, I personally know an artist in Canada who had a full-time job. They worked in an office building. They wrote a uh, science fiction or horror stories, fiction, and they publish regularly and they have a fan base and they regularly make over a thousand US a month. So it is possible to just simply through sheer force of will, and if you're a great writer and you have a following, you certainly can make money. I'm not talking about that in this podcast. I'm talking about nonfiction books, low, medium, and high content books that you can create relatively easily and you can upload them and make some sales. Although if you wanted to write fiction, that's perfectly fine too. I just, I'm not an expert in that field, so I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time talking about it in this podcast. I don't think books are a dead medium at all. I think that there's a lot of information online, and as a result, we look at information online and we think, well, there's no point in writing a book about it. All the information's right there. But I don't think that's necessarily true. And I can use myself as an example. I've got a Zen water cooler channel. I've got a Crafty Stacks YouTube channel. I've got hundreds and hundreds of videos on various topics about print on demand, selling digital assets, side hustles, that kind of thing. I also wrote a book. It's called Print on Demand Secrets, hashtag shameless self-promotion. And so that's sitting on Amazon. So why do people buy the book? because there's really not a lot in the book that's not already available on YouTube. I totally admit that. The answer is that not everybody learns through YouTube videos. Some people enjoy reading books. And I don't want to stereotype, but I'm just going to say there are some older people, like my mom, for example, who just doesn't want to sit there and watch hundreds of hours of YouTube videos. She would rather read a book because she can highlight things, she can bookmark it, it's a little bit quieter. It doesn't have a ton of quick cuts like the way a video would. And so there are definitely people in the world that prefer to learn and enjoy through a book. So it doesn't need to be a 600 page opus that's the biography of Napoleon, for example. 
If you're an expert in a field, you could write a very short, very well written, and include some illustrations. Maybe you're an expert in a computer game, for example, or an expert in gardening, or you have to ask yourself, like, what are you an expert in? So the next criticism is totally related to that. You might be thinking, well, I've never been interested in books before because I'm not an author. And again, I'd encourage you to get out of the mindset from the 1970s where you're sitting hunched over a typewriter with a cigarette with the ash falling into the coffee and you've been up all night trying to bang out the great American novel. That's not really what we're talking about here. There's all sorts of different niches that you can get into and they don't involve necessarily writing a ton of words. Now they do involve writing something and they do involve some graphic design and they do involve laying out a book. But if you have graphic design skills and you're interested in print on demand, it's not that difficult to make the leap from a graphic interface like a fine art printer or a t-shirt and moving over to a book. I would encourage you to look at a book the same way you would it is as a t-shirt or a fine art print. It's a work of art. It just happens to include some words. And I'm going to give you a real life example right now. So for example, let's pretend you go to a bookstore and you see a coffee table book, right? And a coffee table book is typically a hardcover book and it has lots of pictures in it. And they could be pictures of anything, but let's just say you have a picture of lakes and streams, waterfalls, the ocean. So you're really into, you know, maybe you like, you like boating, for example, or sailing. So that would be a typical coffee table book that you would see at a brick and mortar bookstore. So how can you compete with that in the print on demand world? Well, you could have, for example, a hardcover book or a soft cover book, glossy pictures inside of beautiful lakes and streams and nature. And instead of having just it talking about the location, you could have completely inappropriate dirty nursery rhymes and it could be a bathroom reader. So you'd have naughty poems and you would say dirty poems for the bathroom and you've got these beautiful pictures and then you've got just these completely obscene nursery rhymes. Now again, you might be thinking, well, who on earth is going to buy that? You would be surprised because people like joke books in a bathroom. You might have personal anecdotes that you would want to put into a book. Maybe you've got some funny travel stories or maybe you've just got some really raunchy poems that you would want to put into a book. So I'm just using that as an example. It's the juxtaposition between the nice, beautiful pictures and the text that would make it funny. There's all sorts of funny memes online and there's funny GIFs online. And if you could have those sort of ideas, but in a book format, you can really do some damage in the print on demand world because those books are not typically going to be sold in a brick and mortar store. So if you do funny or rude or interesting, you know, I'll, if you go into Amazon, for example, and you type in adult coloring book, one of the top results that comes up is called cats being dicks. And so they're these, it's a coloring book and it features these cute cats, but they're doing horrible things. Like they're knocking the coffee cup off the table. They're flipping in the middle finger. Like they're just absurd, ridiculous, surreal pictures, but they're coloring. It's a coloring book. That's typically not going to be in a target or a Walmart or your local grocery store. They're going to have much more mundane, vanilla things like cats. Well, but what about cats, but doing ridiculous things? Well, that would be much more in the print on demand world. So you got to get out of this traditional mindset and move more into a naughty mindset, funny mindset, unique mindset to say, oh, this is what print on demand is all about. I'll give you another example. You could have daily inspirational quotes and you could have beautiful nature pictures in a book but the inspirational quotes would all be about dealing with dummies in the workplace so it would be like you know lord have the strength to put up with people that are complete morons you know and maybe you throw the f word in there or something again you can be naughty and funny but if it's juxtaposed against a beautiful picture it looks at first glance like it's a straight ahead inspirational book but really it's a joke book and you'd give this to your coworker and you'd say, hey, I deal with dummies, you deal with dummies, isn't this a great joke, ha ha, and they would buy the, you know, buy the book, it'd be a great gift. So gift ideas are huge in the print on demand world. So if you say to yourself, you're not an author, I would beg to disagree. I think you can be an expert in a field and you can also be an artist in the sense that you could look at a regular type of book and ask yourself, is there a way I could skew it to make it 
more interesting. Now, the third criticism of writing books is, is a legitimate one, and it's that books and writing and publishing, it's just completely overwhelming. That when you first look at Amazon and you type in a book title, you get back hundreds of results, thousands of results. These books look amazing. They sound amazing. And you're like, where do I even begin? How can I even compete in these niches? It's a legitimate concern. So what I'm hoping this podcast will do is sort of pull the cover back and at least allow you to see that it is just a rinse and repeat formula. You can go onto Amazon KDP, you can create an account, you can upload books, you can publish books, and then they'll send you money. Like that's pretty much all it is. Now the details, of course, that's what we'll get into a little bit more. And I've got uh, some videos on the Zen Water Cooler channel as well, if you're interested. And I'll put a link to that in the podcast description as well. There will be videos though, so just make sure you're not driving your car or using your eyeballs because you want to be able to look at the video. Okay, so is it a dead medium? No. I think the barrier to publish is so low that if you've got an idea, you can easily create a book and you can easily publish a book. And even if it doesn't sell, at least you scratch the creative itch. It's not costing you hundreds of dollars to create copies that sit in your garage for the next 20 years. Like they, you know, like that's what it was in the old days. When I first published a book, I got a stack of copies coming to my house. And it doesn't work like that anymore in the print-on-demand world. I think self-help books are always popular. Ask yourself, are you an expert in something? And the answer should be yes, of course you are. Maybe you're really good at doing makeup tutorials. Maybe you have a background in human resources or IT, you know, computer repair guy. There's always different things you can do. Even if you've gone through a life challenge, maybe you've lost a lot of weight. Maybe you've got a profession that renders you an expert, like you're a marriage counselor or you're an accountant something like that. So the internet has a lot of information, but it is chaotic and it's not very well written. So having a book properly structured with a table of contents and having it well written can be a great advantage over the chaos that is the internet. Now, if you really are not an expert in anything, you could always just interview people too. That's another option. So if you know an expert, you could always say, hey, grandma, you lived through World War II. Could I interview about it? Could I interview you about it? And she might say, absolutely. You know, sits down and talks about it. Maybe she worked in a munitions plant, and you know, you'd want to interview her about her experiences being a woman in the workplace in the 1940s. Well, then you find three other people with similar experiences, and the next thing you know, you've got a hundred or 150-page book about women working in the past, and you might be able to write a cool memoir, or you might be able to write a really cool essay about it. You could also just have a picture book as well. So you could interview people, and you could ask them their opinions on things, and then you could just include photos. So as an example, I just went to Italy recently. So I've been to four cities in Italy. I went to Rome, then I went to Florence, Venice, and Milan. And the reason I went to those cities is I wanted to look at a lot of Renaissance artwork. So does that make me an expert? Well, not really. I don't have a history degree. I don't have an art degree. But I do have a lot of pictures that I took. I could certainly have a funny travel guide, or I could have a real-life self-help book on how to navigate Europe and look at medieval art. It doesn't matter that I don't have the proper credentials. If the book is useful and people buy it and they like it, they'll leave me a good review on Amazon and that'll move it up in the search rankings and other people will buy it and other people will like it. The book just has to be good. So the barrier to entry is very low. You don't need to beg a publisher to publish your book. You can just simply publish the book. And if it looks great and if it's got great information that people find helpful, that's all you need to get going. Okay, I want to talk next about low content books and high content books and medium content books. This can be very confusing. So let's start with low content book. A low content book is basically a cover and then either a completely blank book inside or very minimal insides. So for example, a journal would have a cover and then maybe some blank pages or some lined pages, maybe a graph paper interior, but it wouldn't have necessarily words in it. They might even have some very light photos or pictures inside it as well. So an example of a low content book that's a journal would be a unicorn on the front of the cover and then inside is just a blank journal. And then there's a space on the front for you to put your name. 
So if you were eight years old and you loved unicorns, you'd buy it or your mom would buy it or grandma would buy it. And then you put little Jenny as your name on the front. And then that would be your journal that you would use maybe at school. It's like a notepad or a diary. So you have to think in terms of what the customer wants. So just using journals as an example, hopefully you're seeing you could easily have a thousand different journal ideas. You could have places in the world, pictures, illustrations, AI generated images, funny photos, funny images. There's all sorts of animals and medieval and fantasy drawings that you could have on the front. There's all different niches because people want a journal that has what they like on the front of it. There's also puzzle books. And puzzle books are great too because if you use software like BookBolt, for example, or even if you just create your own puzzles, you can hand draw mazes or you could have different games, word searches, that kind of thing. And if you have those inside the book, you can create a great book that will last for years online and people, especially if they like your book, they'd click on your author's name and they could see other puzzle books there. So if you sell one, chances are high that you could sell two, three, five, even ten. So if you go into Amazon and you search for puzzle books, you'll often find authors with 10, 20, 50, even 100 different books. Now you can do the same thing as with the journals. So for example, if somebody really likes puzzle books and you know that they really like unicorns, you could have a unicorn themed puzzle book or you could have an Italy themed puzzle book. So again, most people, I shouldn't say most, some people are buying print on demand books because they're gifts. So if I know, for example, that my mom really likes horses, not, a, not only am I going to buy her a horse t-shirt, but I'm going to buy her a horse book as well. It could be pictures of horses. It could be AI generated funny horse pictures. It could be horse cartoons. It could be horse poems. There's all sorts of horse related items that you could have inside of a book. And because I'm a lazy son and I don't know what to get my mom for Christmas. I just go, eh, she likes horses. Let me type in horse book and see what comes up on Amazon. And then I would just buy the book and get it shipped right to her house. So Amazon's making it really easy for people like me and you to purchase a book for a loved one and just go, what do they like? Type it in and then bing, bang, boom, buy the book, ship it to their house. So blank books are really popular. Now, again, the barrier to entry is very low. So the competition is very high. So I'm not suggesting that you only produce these. But if you're starting out as an author and you're really worried about spending a year creating a book and then not being able to upload it, I would suggest that you just create a cover and then the interior of the book is blank. So it depends on how you're going to upload into Amazon KDP. But if you had a blank Word document with 50 pages, for example, and then you uploaded that as your interior, and then you have the size of the book now rendered through Amazon KDP. You download a template and then you create the cover on top of the template. So basically a book is comprised of two different things. Your interior, which can be blank, and then also your cover. And your cover consists of the front cover, the back cover, and the spine. So if you're a graphic artist and you don't feel like you're an author, I would highly recommend that you start off with low content books. These would be journals lined loose leaf paper. There's another one called junk journals. There's puzzle books. There's gag gifts. So for example, if you type in gag gift book, you're going to get all sorts of naughty book ideas that come back. You know, forgive me for what I'm about to say because it might be a little bit rude, but it's like, you know, the big wiener society is on the front of the book and it's just a blank book, right? But you give that to your buddy who's in college and then he pretends to read that book to try to pick up chicks. And it's like, it's a stupid idea, but for five bucks, it can make a really easy gift idea for someone, right? So you got to think outside the box. You're creating some high art and you're slaving away at a typewriter for the next two years. You can upload a picture of a banana, the Big Wiener Society on the front, or a picture of a hot dog and the Big Wiener Society on the front. And then that's, that's the cover of the book. And then the rest of it's just blank. It'll probably wind up in the garbage, but hey, you just made a little bit of a profit because it's a cheap book that's a really a gag gift. On the complete opposite spectrum of a low content book is a high content book. So a high content book is a little more like a traditional book. So if you're looking for an example of a high content book, you can look at a fiction novel. You could Google, for example, Print on Demand Secrets by Zen Watercooler. That's a high content book. You could look up any normal book that has pictures and text in it, sometimes just text. 
And it's a how-to book, it's a novel, it's a biography, it's a nonfiction book full of essays. Now these can take up to a year or sometimes even more than a year to write these books. They're often self-help books or instruction manuals. So ask yourself, what are you an expert in? And then you can sit down and you can write that book. I would not recommend starting in this area unless you're really passionate about banging out a 100 or 200 page book about something that's really near and dear to your heart. What I would recommend to get started is set up an account on Amazon KDP today or tomorrow. It's easy to do and it's free. And once you've set up an account on Amazon KDP, upload one low content book. And if you can upload one low content book, it at least becomes a real thing. It's not just a fantasy. There's some barrier mentally that gets passed when you upload a one design onto Amazon KDP and it actually gets published and goes live. When that happens, you know you can do this again. So I'd recommend doing one, not 10, not 50. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just do one low content book. And then you can sit back, clink your drink together and say, hey, congratulations to me. I've created one book. After that, you can then look at high content books. Or in my case, I like to do medium content book. What do I mean by medium content book? Well, a medium content book has some pictures and some text in it, but the text is little more than just like blank pages or lines or graph paper. So an example would be like a coffee table book of nature with some poems in it, for example. Now, I want to be very clear. You don't want to just lift stuff off the internet. You either write it yourself or you make sure that it's in the public domain. You don't want to just steal works of art online. That's not what I'm talking about here. Another example would be a guide to where you live. So for example, I live in Canada. So what I could do is I could create a book that has all the different provinces of Canada with fun facts about Canada. Now where would I get these fun facts? Wikipedia. So I'm not just lifting all the text off of Wikipedia and pasting it right in, but I would obviously modify it, I'd edit it, I'd make it look my own, but I could have one about British Columbia, one about Alberta, I could have one about the Yukon. I could have a whole series of books that are fun facts about different areas of where I live. Now I could do this for any part of the world, but I'm just saying I happen to be an expert because I live in Canada. But if you live in the United Kingdom, for example, maybe you want to have fun facts about London. Top 20 places to see in London. Top 20 places to see in Barcelona. So if you live there, you're going to know all the great places to see. Maybe you want to do 50 off the beaten path tourist attractions of your hometown. It doesn't need to be hundreds of thousands of words. It doesn't need to be 200 pages. If you wanted to do 50 off the beaten things in your hometown, you could simply have 50 photographs and then you would have one side of the page is the thing. So you'd have like a text, like paragraph. And then the other side of the page would be a picture of it. Well, that's a 100-page book right there. So it's not really that much work. So that's why they call it a medium content book, because you're not slaving away for years on end, pounding it out on the typewriter. Instead, you're putting pictures and text together in such a way that it looks great, and it's easy to read, and it also provides some value. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually publish a book. There's two routes that you can take. One, route number one, is to manually create a document, like in Microsoft Word. So you would put in the text, you'd put in the pictures, and then you'd upload that document to Amazon KDP. Once you upload it to Amazon KDP, you'd know the page count, so maybe it's an 80-page book, for example. Then you would get a template on the size of the book. So you got to think, right? Use your imagination, right? If you have a 20-page book or a 220-page book, the 220-page book is going to be much fatter. Therefore, the spine is going to be wider than the little skinny book. So if you've got a fatter book, you're going to want to make sure the template reflects that when you upload your book cover. So really, the page count really becomes paramount. Now, there's all sorts of different page sizes, and I don't really have a strong opinion on it other than to say, look up similar books on Amazon and see what the sizes are of the book. The other thing you can do is literally go to your bookshelf or your school or wherever you find a book, maybe the public library, bring a little tape measure and measure the size of the book that you personally like. 
So if you're using a lot of pictures, I'd recommend like an eight and a half by 11 book. And if you're using just, just words, like there's no pictures at all, you can go a little bit smaller. Option number two is to use automated software. So I like using BookBolt. And again, I'll put a link to that in the podcast description. And I like using BookBolt for two reasons. One is it gives me niche research. So I can look up existing sales of books that are on Amazon and gives me ideas on what to create. But two, the real reason I like BookBolt is that it gives me an easy to use template that I can just throw stuff into the book very quickly. So if I wanted to create a 100 page blank journal, I really just need to worry about the cover of the book and the rest of it just gets exported as a PDF. So I have two PDFs using BookBolt. One is the book cover and then one is the book interior. And from there, I just upload onto Amazon KDP. So you can easily do three books a night if you're doing low content books. You would just scale up the type of design. Maybe you're doing funny coffee table books or you're doing funny journals, blank journals, whatever it may be. You can easily do that using BookBolt software. So I highly recommend them. I really hope you found this podcast helpful. The goal is to lift the veil so you can get excited about creating a book, uploading it onto Amazon KDP, and ultimately making a royalty sale. I really do believe that this is an underutilized, I don't want to say a niche, but an underutilized system for print on demand. I think that things like Redbubble and Merch by Amazon t-shirt designs are very saturated. I'm not saying you can't make sales in them, but you really have your work cut out for you. I do think with books, because of the sheer complexity of a book, even if you're competing in the same niche, and even if you're doing a low content book, the sheer variety means you've got a great opportunity to really stake your claim and make a brand for yourself as an author. If you upload three books a day over the course of a year, you could easily have 900 books sitting in your arsenal a year later. Three times 300, of course, is 900, and you would be making some sales. Unless you've really picked some loser niches, you'd definitely be making some sales. You just want to make sure your book covers look amazing, your interiors are providing value, and the sales will come. It's a lot of work, but I really think if you want to set up passive income, this can be a great opportunity. As always, I would love to hear your comments, feedback, questions. And hey, if you've got an idea for a podcast that you'd like me to ramble on about for about a half an hour, feel free to throw it down in the comments. I would absolutely love to hear from you. Thanks a lot. Keep on creating. I believe in you.